Dual transmitter to single receiver wireless mic systems have been around for a while now. At IBC, I saw the Bling system from Ceremonic. It had one problem. Both transmitters send the audio to a mono channel so you can't separate the voices later. I have found a new mic system that gives me a separated stereo output to my camera. The Comica Boom XD D2 2.4 GHz digital wireless microphone system. This is Alan Halfhill for Personal View. We're going to take a detailed look at this new mics from Comica. Because of the stereo output and having each voice on its individual channel in editing or live, I can adjust the level of the mics individually. And the D2 system is just as easy to use. This digital transmitter wireless mic system is very reliable. All you have to do is charge the transmitters and receiver with the USB-C cable, then put the mics on your talent, turn on the transmitters and receiver, and it does the rest. There is no setting of frequencies, mic level, or pairing. Now you're ready to do a two-person interview with one receiver. This new digital dual transmitter wireless mic system from Comica is well built with rugged plastic construction for very lightweight at 29 grams, including the rechargeable battery. The units are very small as well as being 39 by 22 by 55 millimeters in size. Being so small, they're easy to hide. The system automatically scans to find channels to pair the transmitter to the receiver when turned on. It uses the transmission method of TDMA. What we get is a very clear voice with the latency of a low 50 milliseconds. These units have a high signal to noise ratio of minus 86 dBm. You can use these transmitters without an external microphone as there is one built into the unit. You can just put it on your talent and start shooting. Or you can use an external mic and plug it into the mic jack on this unit. Comica supplies a dead cat for these transmitters and it just fits right over the microphone. And I will show you a test with that later outdoors. The battery life in these units are supposed to be about five hours, which I would believe because since I've had this unit, I have not had to charge it through the USB-C port. The range of these units seem to be about 50 meters. And again, I did testing outdoors. They also supply lavalier microphones, and there's two of them. Here is the second one right here. They just plug right directly into the top of the unit, like so. And there's a little clip that you push in as well. And now the mic will not come out. It locks the mic in there. You can also use this clip on other microphones as well. The lav mic also comes with its own foam windshield. And the little dead cat that... Comica supplies will actually fit on top of the windshield that comes with the microphone. You just have to push it down until it's all the way on, like so. And now you have a dead cat on your lavalier microphone. The receiver comes with three different cables from Comica. And you have a cable for Canon and Nikon. You have a smartphone cable for plugging into a smartphone, which is this cable here. But they also have this orange cable, which is one of my favorite colors, for Sony, Panasonic, and Fujifilm. So that is the one that I would plug into the receiver in the out, like so. All three of these units have little clips on the back of them, and the receiver has a clip that if you take it, you can slide it into your camera's hot shoe and the receiver will now mount on your camera. And then I can take the audio cable and plug it in to the mic in jack of my GH5 right here. 
and we'll plug the mic cable in. Now all I have to do is turn on these units and I'll be ready to record because of the automatic pairing. To power on these units, you just turn the power button and hold it and the words Comica come on the little screen and you'll see it says A. There's also a slash to the pair means that this is not paired yet. Now we'll do the second receiver and see what it does when we turn it on. And here comes the second receiver. It also says A. They both say A, as you can see. And the, the reason why is because I have not paired with the receiver yet. So we'll put these out of the way and bring the receiver into view and we'll turn it on. And here it comes right now. It's on top of the camera and it says A and B. And if we move it a little off the side, you'll now see that this receiver says A, actually says B, and then this receiver or transmitter says A. So now we're all paired and ready to go. And as you can see, we have levels right here. The interesting thing about the levels is it, it comes out at zero dB. You can also, with buttons on the side here, individually adjust the level higher by pushing the button. And it goes all the way up to plus 12, as you'll see. I can do the same thing with the B channel, but I like it at zero for my GH5 because Panasonic's like lower volume coming from the, trans from the receiver. Now that we have the transmitters on and they're paired and they're on their A and B channels, I can now do my recording. You can see here on the left side there is the USB charge port and a reset button. On the other side, the right side, you have a mute button as well and I can push that mute button and uh, we can, it will mute the audio. See I have just muted the audio. There's a little indication that I muted the audio. I can hold it again and it should come back on again. Actually the unit went off. So let's push it back on and hold the mute button and now it's back on again. A little sensitive but is, is able to be done. And then the second button is a pair button if you need to pair these after the fact or if there's more of these units around and you want to pair the particular units that you have, you have the pair button. Also, the receiver has a USB charge port only on the left side and on the right side it has the extra buttons for lowering the and raising the volume as well as going between mono, which is what it is right now, and I just pushed the button and now it's stereo and that's the big deal here. Now if I talk into these microphones you'll hear me on both channels. 111, 111. See? 111, 111. They are discrete. You have two channels going into the camera. You can also plug in headphones into a headphone out on the receiver. And yes, I do hear audio from this one and now this one, and they're on separate channels. All right, I now have my camera hooked up and you are actually hearing the microphones. Right now, if you go here, you'll see that the level's at zero on my GH5. I can manually turn that down to about minus six. And you can see that's a nice level that I'm getting at minus six. With a lot of mics, I have to go all the way down to minus 12. But as you can see, uh, minus six is not bad. And even minus four is not that bad. And I have the mics on me. So you can actually hear the separate microphones. In fact, uh, here we go. You can see there's mic right here. And this one should be uh, louder. And now we have this one over here. And now this one is going to be louder. And as you can see, uh, it works quite well. 
And uh, I'm pretty impressed that uh, this works so easily with my GH5. I have put the two lavalier microphones on me, and as you'll be able to see, I'm getting two levels, one on the left and one on the right. The left is lower because the mic is farther away. It's over here. And the other mic is right here in the center. And that's why we're getting two levels. Now if I hit the mute button on the receiver, I will no longer have sound. And I don't have sound on the left channel. If I turn it now I have it back on again. And I can do the same thing with the right receiver. Now I have no sound on the right hand side. And then I can turn it back on and now I have sound on the right hand side. So the little mute buttons work quite nicely. You just push them and then it mutes. And this is what the lavalier microphones sound like. Now we're going to take the system outdoors and I will do a distance test outdoors. Okay, I am testing these microphones and we'll see how they do here outside. I'm going to walk away from the camera now and go and see how far we can walk before we lose signal. And of course the, the body was protecting the wind, but it's also shielding the signal going to the receiver. So I will walk, and probably now I'm, what, I'd say probably about 50 feet away at this point. Yeah, probably about 50 feet. And we'll just keep walking, see how far we can go, turned around. And of course we'll turn around again and now I'll be uh, 75 feet, something like that. And we'll just keep walking. And we'll go up to about 100 feet. This thing's rated at 50 meters, according to the box. I suspect it will do a little bit better. Uh, we will see. And we'll go a bit farther. Because the distance I really can go it's it's probably right about here but I'm really tiny right now you're talking really tiny right now and I have the wind muffs by the way on these two microphones and now we'll walk into the wind but I was probably 75 to 100 feet away And when I get to about 50 feet, we will see. But I'm getting a fair amount of wind right now, so it'll be interesting to see how well these little wind muffs work. And it'll be very interesting to see, because I got wind muffs on both of these microphones. But the wind is pretty strong right now, so it'll be interesting to see how well they work walking into the wind as I walk back. But uh, I'd be really tiny in the frame and to have a wireless mic that far away really isn't incredibly useful because you could just overdub and no one would be able to tell the difference. Now the wind has calmed down and I'm close to the camera. Probably about 10 feet. Now, now let's do some testing for delay and interference. To test delay, I have this little microphone here going into my camera. And I also have up above me my hypercardinoid microphone recording me as well on the opposite channel. Channel 1 is the hypercardinoid. Channel 2 is this little Comica microphone, which is plugged into the XLR box on my GH5. And you will now be able to see the delay that is caused by, in fact, the way we're going to test it is to do a clap. Now that we've done the clap, we will take a look at it on my Mac and see in what it looks like.
is to do a clap. We can calculate the delay by looking at the waveform in Final Cut Pro, which is just over one frame at 24 frames a second, which works out to be roughly 50 milliseconds. To test interference, a professional spectrum analyzer is used to measure what this wireless system is doing and how it uses the available radio spectrum. Then a controlled interference source is used to see how it's going to react to radio interference and what to expect will happen in real life situations. So here's the wider band view of the Comica. As you can see, it generates frequencies between 2.4 and above 2.5. This is pairing, so it's off at the moment when we switch it on and you will see that the packets of information going all over the frequency band. Then by switching it off, you'll see in the waterfall suite, which is the one below the packets of data, disappear like this. Then a narrow band startup where it tried to get the Comica to negotiate itself into a different band, and it doesn't. You see that it just writes its way all the way through there. This test is where the receiver is walked away and the range is found to be about 10 meters with all of this interference going on from the sweep generator. That's the data you are seeing in the middle. There's a dropout that you just have seen coming through and then we change the sweep interval to be 1 megahertz so, so moving reasonably quick but again that you can see that the Comica is just generating its data all the way across the band and once again with the transmitter very near the sweep interference generator you will get about 10 meters and you will just see some of the dropouts coming through there. The sweep generator is then cranked up a little bit to use the 50 megahertz interval that was running really fast. This proved to be the most effective at disturbing the Comicas and occasionally you'll see it down about 2 meters, but that is a really arduous test. Obviously when you switch the interface off, there's a dropout coming through. When you switch the interface off the range, it goes right back up to 90 meters. Here's the narrow band sweep test as it was tried again to try and get this thing to work. But again, you can see that the data is just distributed all away across the 2.4 up to the 2.5 gigahertz band. That leads to some conclusions, which is about the way the Comica constructs its data and how it sends it to the receiver. The conclusion is that the data is put into multiple packets that are shifted across the frequency spectrum and the receiver just puts them all together and that's the way it does get distributed by the radio frequency aggressive test that we are making. This Comica Boom XD D2 is very easy to use and provides good, clear, reliable stereo and mono sound without much fuss. Overall, I very much can recommend this unit, especially because they are so affordable. This is Alan Halfhill for Personal View. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you later.